Welcome back to Shorts Behind the Sports. We're here with, with Kyle Sylvester, who coached summer ball at the Cape this summer. Kyle, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, going into my second year here as a hitting and infield coach. Um, played baseball for five years at Wesley and four in my undergrad, one in my master's year. I uh, was a utility infielder and then um, kind of coordinated connections with getting on Odie's staff here. Going into my second year, I've been joining so far. Awesome. Great to have you here. So tell us a little bit about the summer ball team that you coached this summer. Yeah, uh, so I coached for the Harvard Mariners this summer based out of Harvard, Massachusetts in the Cape Cod League. Uh, it was a really cool experience getting to work with some of the best players in the country. Um, it was an awesome experience getting to coach alongside Steve Engler and his staff too. Um, just the whole experience between you know the fans, the family-friendly environment down there, and, and the high level of baseball was awesome. Awesome. And where does the head coach, where does he coach during the school year? Uh, he's an assistant at Manhattan College. He was okay. also part of the Boston College staff for a while too. Wow. Okay, awesome. And how did you make the connection to coach at the Cape? Yeah, sure. So I actually coached two years um, of summer Legion baseball, which is like high school baseball in the summer uh, from my hometown in Hanover, Massachusetts. Um, met a guy named Brian Tomasini through that Legion experience. He was also an assistant coach um, at Mass Maritime, where my best friend played. Uh, made that connection there, was talking to them for a little bit, and then he passed me over to Steve Engler and his staff over there and got the opportunity. So Awesome. Good to have those connections for yeah. sure. So was this a paid in um, experience or was it volunteer? So the, yeah, so the coaching is all voluntary in the summer. Um, I kind of got paid through working on the field. So we were up you know, from 8 a.m. to noon every single day, prepping the field, doing the lines, um, you know, um, cleaning up the dugouts and all that stuff. So um, the coaching itself is voluntary, but you get paid through other positions, working camp, working on the field and everything like that. So. Gotcha, so pretty long days for yeah. you. Yeah, very long. Yeah. <laughs> So what were your like duties like during practice and then first during games? Yep, so there's not too many practices in the summer, um, just because we're playing, I think we played 46 total games throughout the summer between uh-huh. regular season and playoffs. We're playing you know, five to six games a week every night. Um, so we didn't have too many practices, but duties during the game was coaching first base, um, coaching the outfielder, so defensive shifts around the outfield. Um, sometimes we'd, you know, we'd get to the field early on home game days, so our games would start either around 6 or 6.30. Guys would report to the field at about 2.30 um, to you know, stretch throw, do indi- you know, individual defensive work. So during that time, I'd be with the outfielders working on different drills, you know, a lot of the same drills every day. Um, and then you know, once we move into BP, a lot of the responsibilities I had there was throwing a majority of the BP rounds all summer. So um, got to work alongside with the hitters a little bit, definitely got to be a part of the base running game, but mainly with the outfielders all summer. Gotcha. So. Okay, cool. And like, when did when was like the start of the regular season and then like playoffs? Yeah, so the, the start of the regular season starts in June. It's a June, July, August timeline. Um, so again, like I said, we're we practice kind of for that first week. Guys are getting back from their colleges, getting back from the College World Series. Um, some guys get to you know get in a little bit late based on how long they've played into the postseason at their schools. Um, so we're starting in June. We play about five games a week after that first week of practice. Um, all the way up into you know the beginning of August when the playoffs start, um, and then you know we were fortunate enough to play um, all the way into the championship game and win that. So yeah. it, was a, it was definitely a long summer, but it was awesome. Right? So. Yeah. When exactly did it end? Like, uh, I'm not sure. I actually forget about the exact date, but mm-hmm. right around kind of that middle of August, right at the beginning, middle of August. Gotcha. So, yeah. Okay. So the Cape is considered to be a pretty like premier summer league yep. in the nation. Yep. What was the talent level like? It was awesome. Um, you know, I, you know, I've been around. I've played Division Three baseball. Obviously, I'm a coach here. It was cool to see, um, kind of the the difference in town a little bit up and in, in that level. You know, a lot of those guys from those leagues are um, getting drafted in next year's draft or this year's draft. Um, got to see, you know, some um, All Americans play. We had a few, you know, college All Americans on our team. Um, got to witness them firsthand. Their BP rounds, them, their processes, taking ground balls in the infield, how they go about their business, their early work, all that stuff, their lifts. Um, so it was really cool to see, you know, what those guys do compared to, you know, some of the guys that I was around um, and some of the similarities and some of the differences that go on at that level. So. Yeah, right. Like, in terms of similarities, what did you say? Yeah, so, I mean, baseball is baseball, right? Guys are, you know, I told my guys here back on the first week at camp, but some of those guys are making the same mistakes that our athletes do, right? Forgetting the number of outs, mm-hmm. um, forgetting the situation that's going on in the field. So just because they're, you know, playing at some of these schools like Texas A&M, LSU, Vanderbilt, doesn't mean that they still aren't making the same mistakes that our guys are making or some of the same mistakes that the guys that I played with are making. Um, so it, it was funny to see that, honestly, because I wouldn't think that, right, not experiencing something like that so far, but they do make the same mistakes. Some of the main differences are physical prowess. A lot of those guys are um, physically gifted. 
Um, and, you know, at least, you know, working with the offensive core, their adjustability at the plate was top tier, right? Their, their ability to, yeah, maybe make a mistake, fail one rep, and then succeed on the next three, four reps was top level talent, so. Yeah, for sure. And how did you approach those differences in talent? Um, yeah, so, I mean, first of all, you know, it was kind of, I wasn't too involved with the hitters. Like, a lot of, you know, the offensive work that I was involved with was throwing BP. Um, so, but observing those differences was, was talking to guys. I definitely had side conversations with some hitters. Some guys were struggling at some points and didn't want to get too in their ear about certain things because they have their hitting coaches back at school. And um, a lot of those guys are pretty smart enough to, to understand what they're doing wrong. But I definitely had some conversations with some guys about um, certain techniques or, or certain things that they need to focus on to help them um, produce in, in the game. So definitely those side conversations. I, I built a great relationship with Danny Dickinson, who just transferred from Utah, um, Utah Valley to LSU. Uh, we talked a lot this summer about certain mechanics with him um, through his you know, rough spot in the middle of the summer. But um, towards the end of the summer, he was great for us. Um, so it was great to build those relationships, you know, recognize those differences and work with those guys throughout the summer as well. Yeah, for so. sure. That's awesome that you have those relationships that you yeah. built too. It's definitely an important part, I think. So in terms of, you know, getting to the championship, did you have to adjust like any strategies as a team during the playoffs? And yeah, so it, um, it was, you know, that kind of gets into our, our, our whole roller coaster. So. We started off really well. Like we started off about nine and five, I think it was, in our first fourteen games. Things were going well. I mean, part of the Cape League is guys will leave the league. We have to sign new guys. Guys are getting cut. Um, but we kind of hit a really rough spot in the middle of July. We went one and sixteen over a seventeen game span in July, um, and things kind of like flipped right on its head. Right, we were nine and five at the beginning of June. Those next seventeen games ended June into July. We were one and 16 and you know kind of fighting for our lives to get in the playoffs at this point now um, our head coach was still kind of going by the book and saying you know trust the process trust the process trust the work that you guys are putting in keep fighting because our guys were playing really hard every single day it's just we weren't coming out on top and it was an aggravating experience to to watch that from the outside as a coach to be able to see yeah these guys are really really putting in 100 percent effort but not getting the outcome that they deserve um, so that was a, a Tough spot to see in the middle of the summer, so we had to stay with it into the playoffs. And I think we ended up going like six and four, seven and three in our last ten to get into the playoffs as the three seed on our side. Beat Chatham in the uh, division semifinal game in ten innings, seven to six, um, which was a, it was a crazy game. Um, beat YD in the division championship two to nothing in a three game set, and then ended up beating Bourne uh, two to one in a three game set in the finals. Wow, so. that's a crazy turnaround. Yeah. <laughs> <It was> a, <laughs> for was, sure. Yeah. Wow. Yep. What do you think were some of the key factors that kind of contributed to, to winning? Yeah, um, definitely some things that, that stand out to me were the guy's work ethic, right? You you know, I was on the field at 8 a.m. working on the field, right? I was there from 8 to 12.30 every day, and then we'd have a little bit of gap in, the time, in between the time that we had to report back at 2.30. Um, we would see guys down at the cages at 11 a.m. They didn't have to be there until 2.30, right? That was our report time. Um, they were going to get plenty of individual defensive work, plenty of swings prior to every game, but they were there at 11 a.m. Pitchers were doing sprints on the outfield without the pitching coach around unannounced. They were doing their stuff. Hitters were coming by the cages, so guys were still putting in the work, still doing that stuff, even though we were 1-16, and right? And it's um, a very easy thing to do to just take that time off, just show up to the field when you need to. But those guys just kept putting in the work every single day. It was crazy to see, honestly. Um, and I was hoping all along that process that something was going to click, and that eventually did. So it was yeah, cool. absolutely. Wow, that's a lot of dedication on their end, yeah. and that's great to see when it's like not the most ideal situation that they they just kept yeah. like persevering. So now shifting the focus to more of like the culture on the Cape. Yep. I know it's uh, it's a very like the population of the town is very invested in, in yep. the Cape League. So did you like stay with the host family? Yep. Or how was the um, relationship? Yeah, so I stayed with the assistant GM um, and also one of our pitching coaches. We had two pitching coaches in the summer. Um, so I stayed with him. We were both staying in the assistant GM's house. A lot of the players are staying in host families. So um, host families is one of the biggest um, reasons why the Cape is able to do what they do, right? If, if not as many families were um, offering their homes um, all summer, guys wouldn't be able to come down and, and, and have this experience in the Cape. So um, the Cape is a, a very um, family-friendly atmosphere. Um, a lot of the people that are residents of the town will come out to every home game. 
Um, so you see a lot of kids, kids asking all our guys for autographs after the game and everything like that. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a really cool um, atmosphere to be around aside from the baseball. Yeah, so. that's awesome. And I know you mentioned like one of your players that you developed a really good relationship with. Anything, any others? Like yeah, um, definitely. You know, talked with Michael Anderson from Arkansas, Matt Scannell from from Princeton. He's now going to play at Wake Forest. So those are some of the guys that I worked with defensively at first base a little bit because I was part of, you know, teaching infielders a little bit of stuff. Again, priority was with the outfielders, but definitely helped coach the infielders a little bit. Um, talked to Ryan Weingarten.